While building spring-based applications, it is important to understand the concept of dependency injection. In this video, I am going to talk about dependency injection with a simple example here. If you take a look at this class, here we have a post controller class which has a method called getPost which internally calls post service dot get post method. So here we have a final field post service and we are passing the a post service dependency through constructor. In the same way we have post service class which again depends on post repository and post repository is not depending on anything else but in real world it may talk to database and things like that. So here how do we provide a dependency of a class? If you notice we are not initializing its dependency in this case post service within the controller class itself. Instead it is taking the dependency through constructor. So we are expecting someone else to provide any a instance of post service. The same is the case for post service also. Post service is expecting a post repository instance while constructing the post service object. So how can we provide these dependencies? We don't actually need a framework for uh, implementing dependency injection. It is as simple as like this. So this is a manual way of doing the dependency uh, injection. So here Looking at these classes, we realize that uh, in order to create a post controller instance, first we need an instance of post service. Again, uh, for, a, uh, for creating a post service instance, first we need to create an instance of post repository. So that's what we are doing here. First, we are creating a post repository instance and then we are constructing post service instance by passing the post repository as a constructor argument. And then finally, we are uh, creating an instance of post controller. So here we are doing the dependency injection manually, which means we are keeping track of which objects needs which other dependencies and then we are creating them first and then instantiating the dependent objects. So this is fine for a simple application like this where we have only a handful of classes. But imagine if we have to do this for a project with hundreds or even thousands of classes, that's not practical. So that is where we use frameworks like Spring. Now let us see how we can implement dependency injection using Spring. So in order to do the dependency injection, first we need to tell Spring framework that we need to treat post controller, post service and post repository as Spring beans. How can we do that? We can use add component annotation to say to the Spring framework that you should treat this as a Spring bean. Similarly, let's add add component to post service and post controller also. After marking these components as a component spring bean, usually you can use this at auto wide annotation to convey that we need to inject the dependencies, whatever the dependencies we have marked here in the constructor, we are saying spring framework that we need an instance of post service to construct this and use this constructor for creating an instance of controller. But if your class has only one constructor, you don't even need to use this at auto wide. Spring automatically use this one single available constructor for creating an instance of the class. So now we have marked these all the components and then Spring will figure it out and create it. Now this annotation is a generic annotation to indicate this class as a Spring bin. But instead of using the generic annotation, there are more specific annotation that uh, defines some semantic meaning. For example, at controller. So we are using at controller for post controller. It also says this is a spring bean. And also it says that this is a class where we might have a uh, handler methods to handle web requests. So we are conveying extra meaning by using a specific annotation instead of using a generic one. Similarly, for business uh, layer service components, instead of using at component, you can use at service. That convey that this is a service layer component. And similarly, if we have a repository which usually talk to database to store or retrieve data, you can use at repository annotation. And it is not only simply for uh, giving a semantic meaning, some 
annotations also provide some extra uh, features also for example at repository let's imagine in this post repository we are talking to a database and fetching some data and if you use at component and while talking to the database if the query or something it throws sql exception it is going to throw the same sql exception to the upper layers whoever calls the post repository they are going to get the sql exception whereas if you use at repository and if the database throws sql exception your spring framework will automatically convert that generic sql exception into one of the spring's specific exception which reveals what kind of a exception you are getting so that is more useful than just getting sql exception with some uh, error codes so that facility you will get only when you use at repository instead of at component so it is highly recommended to use more specific annotation instead of at component but there can be situations where uh, it doesn't a spring bean doesn't clearly fall into either a repository or service or controller then you can use at component okay so for now uh, we have marked all the uh, beans as spring beans using various specific annotations now how do we instantiate a spring uh, application context and how do we get an instance of a spring bean now let us see how to do that and now i am commenting out this manual instantiation and i am using spring where context equals to new application context so here either i can provide all the bean class names or i can create a configuration class like this class and annotate with at configuration so this is another important annotation while using spring framework that can be this is a configuration class in which you can define uh, spring beans or you can use some annotations to enable class paths and things like that so in addition to at configuration let's use at component scan and specify com dot labs dot block so this is nothing but the package name we want to scan so this one so when you say component scan com dot labs dot block spring framework is going to scan this package and all of its sub packages for identifying is there any spring bean like like this at controller at component at service at repository so if there are any components it's going to scan and then create an instance of them and then register in the application context now once we created this configuration class we can specify new annotation config application context and then pass this configuration class now we can get an instance of post controller like this we have context dot get bean and specify what type of bean you want to get i want to get a post controller dot class okay so now i can run this class and spring is going to scan this package and then instantiate all these beans and finally when i ask for a controller class it's going to give a fully constructed post controller and i am getting this post which returns nothing but just these two strings and i am printing it so it is fully because we are uh, calling post repository internally and post service so it means it has all the beans created and it is calling uh, all the chain properly and then printing the results so basically this is how we can uh, use spring framework to do the dependency injection to register the spring beans what we have followed is a annotation based approach with class path scanning approach for now we are using only our own classes and we are able to add our annotations set component at controller whatever annotations we want to add but what if we want to create a, a bean of uh, a class that is coming from a third party library for example we are using jackson or json library and we want to register a bean of type object uh, mapper but obviously that is not our own source code and we cannot add annotation to that 
So how can we register a bean of uh, object mapper type? So this is where we can use Java config approach. So here instead of uh, using annotation based approach, we can also use Java config approach like this. We can use add bean annotation and then we can create object mapper and return new object mapper. So we can create a configuration class and then within this class we can create methods that return some type of object and annotate with add bean. So what Spring will do, it will scan these configuration classes also and then register a bean of this type and using this method as a recipe to create an instance. In this case, it is a simple uh, instantiation or if you can implement some complex logic, you can do that as well. So this is what is called Java config based approach and usually you can mix and match and some people even prefer to follow this approach instead of adding these annotations. But my recommendation would be for your own code, you can add this annotation and use the component scan and register uh, bins of third party classes using Java config approach. We have learned the basic concepts about Spring's dependency injection, but there is more to it. Like there are bean scopes, bean lifecycle callback methods and things like that. But whatever we learned is sufficient to get started. So the additional in-depth concepts that we can learn as and when required while uh, implementing our application. So I hope this video is helpful and thanks for watching. Bye bye.